Hello, listeners. My name is Isaiah Colbert, and this is the Fear of Missing Out podcast, a show where we dip into pop culture touchstones with varying degrees of popularity and ask their superfans why they love them and where you can get started. On this week's episode, we're talking about books with Julia Green and her favorite book, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. All right. So uh, do you care to introduce yourself, dear guest? Hi, uh, my name is Julia Green. My pronouns are she, her, and I am in my last semester as a magazine journalism student at Columbia. Um, I am a self-proclaimed book nerd. I mean, if you know me at all, then you know that I love books, but they're like such a big part of my life, so much so that I'm actually trying to become a librarian. Wow. All right. All right. So you are the first guest that has uh, wanted to come on the show to actually talk about books. So I'm really excited because we haven't done that before. It's usually stayed in the realm of video games and stuff. So it'll be a nice sort of change of pace here. Yeah, I think that we need more book lovers in the world. Just just Mm. way more book lovers, especially college students. Like the amount of college students that I know that read books is pretty low. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of become one of those things where, like, if it's not in, like, a course load, like, assignment thing, people are not really likely to read books. So it's really cool to uh, have you come on and sort of revamp that passion for books on the podcast. I'm happy to be here. Happy to spread my pro book message. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, you you uh, told me that you wanted to talk about uh, something that you said was a masterpiece. So you 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 big you big talked it there. So um, the book. What's the name of the book that you wanted to talk about? So the book that I want to talk about today is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This book is so amazing. I think I read it last summer, and I just immediately became obsessed with it. And I was definitely not let down. The hype. The hype was so big with this book, and I found that I was I was not disappointed whatsoever. If anything, it exceeded my expectations. Okay, okay, that's a big talk. So, um, tell me, tell me, what is what is the book about? Because a cursory uh, Wikipedia search would tell me that there there's some romance that occurs in this book. Okay, so big thing about me is that I love romantic comedies. Like you just have to lean into the camp. You just have to go with the flow. Um, And I've been trying to read more diverse books, like not just straight white people, because those romantic comedies get Mm -hmm. really boring. So red, white and toast ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They're so boring. (laughs) It's like, wow, white woman and white man fall in love. Amazing. But Mm -hmm. this one, (laughs) red, white and royal blue is about it's set in 2020, a better version of 2020, where Mm. there is a female president of the United States. And her son, Alex, is the main character. He's biracial and bisexual. And he falls in love with Henry, the Prince of England. Mm -hmm. So just like let that sink in. It's amazing. Um, The story is so well written. And I want to say this, it's chaotic, like in the best way. So Alex's mom is up for re-election. There's a ton of stuff going on. And Alex is figuring out his sexuality because in the beginning of the book, he hates Henry. Like he's hated them for, he's hated him for a really long time. He cannot stand this guy, but then he's kind of slowly figuring things out. And he's like, okay, wait a second. I think I'm actually attracted to this man. And then from there, it's just like explosions everywhere, but also like a ton of love, a ton of amazing, funny stuff, a good chunk of memes. Like it's just such a fun roller coaster ride to go on okay so uh from what i'm getting is it like kind of like an enemies to lovers kind of a thing or so how does their sort of romance start to bud uh, spill the tea spill the tea okay so it's more of like enemies to fake friends to real friends to lovers mm. because alex's hatred for henry ruins henry's brother's wedding cake at this like big public royal wedding and it's like this big scandal and the the Oval Office is worried about image because the election is coming up. So the solution is to kind of fake a bromance. And mm. so they keep putting Alex and Henry together at these events. They try to get them photographed to show that there's no bad blood between the presidential son and like the Prince of England because that would be bad. Um, and because his mother is the first female president, they're really trying to keep her image up so that she can get reelected. Um, and so they, they form this fake friendship that kind of slowly turns into this real friendship. 
as Alex realizes that he didn't really know that much about Henry to begin with, and he just kind of decided that he hated him. And then he realizes that he doesn't hate him, and then it just slowly becomes gayer and gayer as it goes on. Mm. <laughs> so so um, definitely... Is it like, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so it's definitely, there is that enemies to lovers aspect, but it's not just like, I hate you, and then I love you. There's a lot of growth in the middle that I think makes it that much more genuine. Mm. So basically, like, it sounds like they were, like, really worried about the optics of, like, it was kind of like a political, like, U.S. and Britain relations kind of a thing, or, like, England relations kind of a thing? Yeah, it's, like, international relations, but, like, not. It's, like, they try to make it serious, but, like, it's mm. it's really not because it's this these 20-year-olds who are just, like, oh, we hate each other, but they actually don't. So mm -hmm. there is a good chunk of political stuff mixed in because Alex is so involved in his mom's career and he wants to become a politician himself. So it's not just like a backdrop of politics. Like there's real involvement in the plot. And I think that I really enjoyed that because I feel like politics is such a big part of Alex and Henry's lives that it would feel, it would feel wrong to have it be too separate. Hmm. So um, besides the, the conflict of um, the buddy romance, is there any other like kind of like other forces at play that are like kind of like working against um, our, our protagonist's um, sort of budding romance that's going on there? I mean, there's a good chunk of like, like homophobia isn't, it's not like the main conflict that's stopping them from being together in the sense of like, you know what, actually, I'm going to I'm going to take that back because there is a mm -hmm. really there's a really big presence of homophobia in the royal family in this book. And that's what's keeping Henry from coming out, whereas Alex, for him, it's a bit easier. Um, and Henry is dealing with that big weight on his shoulders of the queen trying to keep him in the closet. So mm. in that sense, it is hard because they have to sneak around. And then the politics of the United States come into play because Alex's mother is running and there's this like old crusty white man bigot running against her and he tries to use Alex's relationship with Henry and his sexuality against her in the race. Okay. So totally not taking some like some some liberties with some real life events that might have happened across the pond with some with some stuff and just some regular old American politics that might go down here then, huh? Yeah, it's definitely I think I think I remember seeing something from the author being like, look, I did not mean to predict the Meghan Markle thing, but like, <laughs> did I? And I was like, I think that I think that Casey McQuiston like literally did. That's it's kind of crazy yeah, if you no. think really deeply about it. Yeah, because I was thinking like as you're describing it to him, like that seems pretty on the nose with some stuff that was going on over there a little while ago. So um, you mentioned the author. So is this uh, the first book that you've written or read from the author? So this is Casey McQuiston's debut novel. And first of all, mm -hmm. this book is like amazing. I'm trying really hard not to swear for you. Um, keeping okay, it yeah, PG yeah. for the kids. <laughs> Even though this, this book is not PG, just want to say that. Um, mm -hmm. this, is their, this is their debut novel. And their second book comes out June 1st. And I'm, a, I'm obsessed. Like, I cannot wait to read this book because their writing is so fun. Um, and their next book is a romance between two women. And I'm so excited to read that. I think it's going to be amazing just from like previous experience with this author. Their writing is so, it's so like flirty and fun. Um, and just kind of like, like I fell in love with it so easy. It was so easy to just mm. get sucked into this book and like never want to leave. Okay. And uh, since it's uh, very um, forth putting that we're talking about this in the month of romance. Um, so I have to ask you, um, how uh, I feel obliged to ask you because the Chronicles doing our sex issue. So how, how spicy does this book get? Because you mentioned that it um, definitely doesn't uh, sort of shy away from being really flirty. So so how, how much spice uh, would we would a reader expect to get out of this one? It's not like a bodice ripper level mm. of romance, but I feel like there's a generous enough amount of spice that like you can't just ignore it. Um. Mm -hmm. And it's not like in your face, like really, really graphic. Um, and I, f mm. 
I never felt like it was taking away from the plot or not contributing to the story as a whole. So it wasn't just like, oh my god, they're going at it again. It was more like, okay, this is an important part of their relationship. Mm. So so no uh, gratuitous magic mic, like random breaks within the, the story, right? Yeah, it wasn't just like, oh, politics, plot, plot, like conversation. Oh, they're just having sex. Like it wasn't like that. Um, mm. okay. And I felt like it was very important because the two of them were having this very private relationship and Alex's discovering his really his he's discovering his sexuality so him having these intimate moments with henry is him figuring himself out okay so i'm curious um this sounds like a really wonderful book by a really wonderful author i'm curious uh what put you on um sort of the um notice for this book to like sort of get into it Where, where'd you get your start so last year when quarantine started I just immediately started reading because I had so much free time and my classes were very minimal at that point. And so I just went straight back into reading. And I love, I love rom-coms. I love romantic contemporary style books. I love those happy endings. And I was definitely in need of some, some good serotonin. So I turned back to romances and I read a few of like the straight ones and like the straight white ones and I was like okay like this was fun but I think I'm done like I need something that's that's a bit more engaging and made me feel like it was reflective of the world around me and so I went on to Goodreads which I have a love-hate relationship with because of Jeff Bezos um but I was like okay somebody help me out here I'm looking for more diverse romances and this one popped up a ton a lot of the a lot of the recommendations were mostly just like this is gay and it slaps and i was like what else do you need i'm sold and so now like when people are like why should i read it? i'm like it's gay and it slaps because it's true like what else do you need to know yeah. um and also i just love like the cover is beautiful it's like this bubblegum pink dream um i loved the concept and i was like how have i not read this yet like how how have i not put my hard-earned dollars towards this book yet and so I immediately got it as fast as I could and I was like yep I'm sold like never going back to reading boring romance books ever again hmm. so uh how quick of a read was it um because uh you sort of picked it up and like sort of showed me in our little zoom call of, like what the book kind of looks like so I'm wondering um how quick of a read was it uh specifically for you because it sounds like you really ate it up okay well something about me is that I am a very fast reader Like, I just go straight through books. Um, And I don't, you know, I'm not like a skipper or anything. Like, I just genuinely am a fast reader. This book is about 400 pages. I want to say that I read it in, like, less than two days. Um, Mm. And, you know, that partly is my style of reading. But I would also say that, like, it doesn't drag on. It doesn't drone. It's very snappy. There's no wasted, there's no wasted time. There's no wasted scenes. There was nothing that I was reading that felt like it was unnecessary and unenjoyable. Okay. So um, what was, I guess, um, out of the whole, like, uh, events that take place in the book, um, I guess not to get too much into spoiler town in case people want to, like, sort of dive into it. um, What was uh, kind of, like, your favorite moment uh, that happened in the book? Um, That is so hard because I have so many Mm. favorite moments in this book. Like, I've literally had bad days and I'm like I need to feel better and I'll immediately just pick up this book and like read my favorite parts I would say there's this one scene that I really really love it's very in the beginning of the book it's more like they're going from being fake friends to real friends and it's Thanksgiving in the White House and they're doing the thing where like the president pardons the turkeys Mm. which happens every year and they're about to put them into like this very fancy hotel suite and Alex is he's so upset I guess he's like frustrated because they're spending taxpayer money on a hotel room for turkeys who are about to get slaughtered and eaten at the White House and he's like that makes no sense and so he's arguing with his mother about it and his mother the president of the United States is like Alex like this happens just let it let it happen let the turkeys go to the hotel and he's like no they can't and she's like where are they gonna stay and he just goes put them in my room and they put the turkeys in his room 
and he's their names are like cornbread and stuffing and he's horrified by them and he can't sleep mm-hmm. because they're like they're like gobbling menacingly at him and <laughs> then he yeah and then he calls henry and it's like 2 a.m in london or whatever and he's like have you called me to talk about turkeys and it's just this mm-hmm. amazing scene where it's like it kind of feels like a fever dream. Like, I can't believe mm. that somebody thought this up and then I got to read it because it was so funny. And it was also like this beautiful way to show Alex as a character because he is just so stubborn. Like him being, him him just looking at his mother and saying, put the turkeys in my room, put the turkeys in my room, put the turkeys in my room. And she just, she's like, fine, have the turkeys. And then he's like, this was a mistake. They're going to kill me in my sleep. I think that that <laughs> scene is probably my my favorite because i just love how it shows the characters so early on and it was just like pee my pants funny i'm imagining like receiving like uh, alex sending the text and uh, henry receiving it saying like i showed you my turkeys please respond (laughs) oh my god wait okay let me see i'm literally gonna go through this book and try to find it because it was just such an amazing moment what page is it on oh my gosh it's gonna drive me insane. Oh my gosh, I'm almost there. Okay, here we go. All right. So there's this moment. He he's on the phone with Henry, and he just he's trying to tell him like why he's called him at 3 a.m. in the morning, and he's like, "Cornbread knows my sins, Henry. Cornbread knows what I have done, and he is here to make me atone." Like it's just this very strange scene where it like kind of makes you realize how perfect Alex and Henry are for each other that like they went through all this like weird this weird scene with these turkeys and like Henry is the person that Alex goes to it was just Mm. this amazing scene that did so many things at once like making you understand them making you love them making you laugh Mm. okay and so you mentioned earlier that um, this book sort of stands apart from like other romance books that you've uh, sort of uh, read and um, obviously it has like the check marks of like it has the gay in it, which is very important. So I was also wondering, um, in what ways uh, does the book kind of like sort of reach out to you in ways of those other um, sort of romance books or other books that you've liked uh, sort of haven't really sort of checked those boxes for you? I think that something that I find with like straight white romances, like a lot of them are great. They're great. I love a ton of straight romances, but I think that something that they can never really recreate is that like figuring out who you are in terms of your sexuality and it's such a meaningful part of a story um and then with Alex and Henry they share it with the world which is a little bit of a spoiler but they do share it with the world and it's this beautiful powerful moment that I think that a lot of straight romances kind of try to get that same impact but it's hard to recreate okay and so um closing out here now um is there like uh, i know that you mentioned that this book is kind of like newer but is there kind of like a fandom that's sort of grown um um for this book and like what's the fandom kind of like because i know that sometimes fandoms can like scare people away from like jumping into uh those types of uh groups i think with this book a lot of standalone books don't have a huge fandom which is understandable. But with this book, everything I've seen about it online has had nothing but extreme affection and love and support. And so a lot of people will say how Henry and Alex have helped them or how this book has given them like a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, And it's just created this very positive community that I am like so happy to be a part of, even though it's not a very big one or a very active one, just because there's nothing else coming out about this book. Um, But the people who engage with the story are always so lovely to interact with. And I think that while this could be a book that like you just read it and then you're done, I, I don't want to be done with it. Like, I don't want to forget about this book. I don't want to stop talking to people about this book. And I don't want the world to forget about this book. And so I feel like the people who read it as well feel the same way. And we're all kind of working to make sure that this story is remembered and that these stories continue to be told in the future. Hmm. That was very eloquently put. Um, So um, closing out here now, um, I guess this is going to be the part of the show where uh, I kind of ask you um, to um, sort of give people who want to jump into this thing uh, what um, 
like they should kind of look out for what they should kind of expect when they uh, sort of like peel open the book or get an e-edition of the book or if there's an audio version of the book start to sort of get into it um what can those um readers listeners expect i think getting into this book you just have to be you have to be open to the joy and the camp of it I think that sometimes with reading, we can take it a little too seriously. And this is a book where you're supposed to have fun. So don't go into it too too close-minded. Go in ready to have fun, ready to fall in love with these characters and watch them fall in love. And hopefully get ready to read a story that you won't forget about anytime soon. I think that was perfect. Um, I'm going to leave a little bit of time here. Um, Julia, feel free to plug anything that you're working on, any socials where anyone can like sort of get into interacting with you, maybe talking a little bit more about the book. Maybe you can start up your own fan club for the book. Um, Just let the people know where to find you on the interwebs. Um, You can follow me on Instagram at Julia E. Green. It's green like the color with an E at the end. And then you can check out my blog where I gush about a lot of book-related stuff, which is earthtojulia.com. All right. Well, I'd say that has been a podcast. So now people know a little bit more than zero about I got to get this name right so I don't um, completely mess it up after we've completely talked about it. You know a little bit more about Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. All right. Be good, listeners. See you next time.